All right, so the Supreme Court is determining several things right now that are going to be, well, <laughs> very, very important. And I'll go over the details of it here in this video. Also, I'm going to go over another very, very interesting case that you're definitely going to want to hear and you are going to find very interesting. I want to know your thoughts on it here in this video. So let's jump right in. And thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Here we go. Let me know your thoughts on this. Okay, first up, how an obscure legal doctrine called the Henderson test could weaken what they call Section 230 and change free speech on the internet, which is basically everywhere. Take a listen to this, and the Supreme Court is going to be hearing this right now. Hi, Tyler, that's right. At issue today before the Supreme Court was the question of whether or not Twitter can be held liable for aiding and abetting ISIS under the Anti-Terrorism Act because some members of ISIS were able to use Twitter to recruit and fundraise for their enterprise and because some people were killed in ISIS terrorist attacks. That was the question that the court was grappling with today. And the court uh, justices seemed to really try to get their arms around what the implications would be of a decision here for all kinds of other businesses, whether it's banks, whether it's gun dealers, whether it's uh, telephone companies, all the rest who might be implicated in a similar type of situation in which ISIS or another terrorist group is able to use general services that are offered broadly to everybody uh, in order to commit a terrorist attack. Now, the lawyer for Twitter made the case this way. He said, ultimately, the court here should conclude that the failure to not do more to remove terrorist content does not amount to the knowing provision of, sub of substantial assistance to ISIS, and therefore this case should go away. And I think you'd have to say, Tyler, that ultimately Twitter today uh, had a worse day in court uh, than YouTube and Google did yesterday under that Section 230 situation that you mentioned. A separate but related case yesterday, I think Google and YouTube fared better. The justice is a little bit more skeptical here today of YouTube, but at the end of the day, the victims in both of these cases are going to have a long way to go to prove that the provision of these kinds of general services to everybody ultimately amounts to aiding and abetting a terrorist organization, guys. Back yeah, over to you. It really, if, if I boil it down to the, to the kernel, uh, I guess I see it this way. The question is whether an internet company, a platform, is responsible legally for the content that is generated by a third party that they, quote, publish on their platform. Right. Yep, and that's the question under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. That's the 1996 law written you know, many eons ago in Internet time, but that provision of the of the law in 1996 said that ultimately these Internet companies can't be held liable for things that third party people post on their platforms. Mm -hmm. That's the third party person's responsibility, not Twitter or Google or Facebook or any of the others. Uh, the issue today was interesting because it was about the Anti-Terrorism Act. Uh, so slightly different legal ground, similar set of victims, though, people who've been killed or harmed in terrorist attacks, arguing that because these companies companies provided services to the ISIS group in this case, uh, that that provided a benefit to ISIS, helped them recruit, helped them fundraise, and therefore there's some liability there. The justices seemed a little skeptical of that argument, mm -hmm. but uh, ultimately they're going to have their day in court and we'll see where the Supreme Court comes down. Decision not expected until later in this term of the Supreme Fascinating Court. Fascinating that you said, and I hadn't thought of it, but it's, it's quite clearly the case. The implications here could extend to businesses in completely unrelated fields, like a gun manufacturer, yep. a gun dealer, a, a pharmacy that sells a harmful drug that was not manufactured uh, by that pharmacy, but by a third right. party. Anyhow, it's, it's a fascinating case uh, in front of the Supreme Court. Now, here's where it gets interesting, is that we're talking about billions of people, billions with B. Remember, China has 1.4 billion people alone. Okay, we're talking about the whole world here. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all these different platforms, worldwide platforms here. Okay, um, and, and we're talking about the United States Supreme Court here. Okay, don't get me wrong here, but we're talking about worldwide issues here. Okay, um, and they're talking about posts here of trying to monitor 
millions and billions of people of what they post, okay? And free speech, free speech, free speech. Remember, free speech, okay? And should your free speech be monitored and limited? Okay, and, and everybody has a different opinion here. But you got to remember that in some ways, free speech is limited. You can't run into a crowded room and yell fire if there is no fire. It's actually illegal. You can get arrested for it if there's no fire because it can cause a panic and you can be arrested for it. So there is limitations to this, okay? Um, now, on the other hand, the gun manufacturers cannot, until until recently, be sued for you know the use of a gun against other people, and and you'll get people that will say it's not the gun that kills people, it's the it's the person that does. But then you'll get other people that say, well, if there wasn't the gun, that it it wouldn't have happened. So you'll get people on both sides here. But then just recently, California, you can see here, California, and um, you'd have to look into other states here as well. Um, this was back in July. California and Governor Gavin Newsom signs the first in nation bill allowing residents to sue makers, sellers of illegal assault weapons. Well, Here's what he had to say. Let me know your opinion on this. Well, it's well known that nearly every industry is held to account when their products cause harm or injury. Well, except one, the gun industry. The gun lobby, well, it spent millions and millions of dollars buying off politicians to shield themselves from any liability. Today, California is going to change that. They can no longer hide from the mass destruction that they have caused. I'll be signing a bill that will allow Californians to sue irresponsible gun manufacturers and distributors. If you've been hurt or a family member is a victim of gun violence, you can now go to court and hold the makers of these deadly weapons accountable. Our kids, families, and communities deserve to live without the worry of gun violence. And with Assemblymember Ting's bill, gun makers will finally be held to account for their role in this crisis. So you can let me know your thoughts on this. Again, everybody has their different opinions on this. But when you look at different industries like this one, four U.S. pharmaceutical companies will pay $26 billion to settle claims that they fueled the opioid crisis. $26 billion in fines. That's a lot of dough. This was in February of 2022. Four of the largest U.S. corporations have agreed to pay roughly $26 billion to settle a tsunami of lawsuits linked to claims that their business practices help fuel the deadly opioid crisis. Johnson & Johnson and three massive prescription drug wholesalers, Amersource, Bergen, Cardinal Health, and McKenson will pay a uh, combined $21 billion and Johnson & Johnson $5 billion alone for them. So again, that begs the question. Are the makers of prescription drugs liable? Are the makers of guns liable? Are the uh, makers of YouTube, Google, Facebook, Twitter, are they liable for what you may post on the internet? And yeah, they can monitor some things, but literally it's just like, like a word you may post, right? I mean, clearly like YouTube may be harder. I mean, maybe comment sections they can limit and stuff like that. But like for video posters, it's, it's harder, right? But like comment section might be easier because maybe, maybe they can. So I like, I know that like certain words go to spam section. So like if you ever see like maybe your comment get deleted or something, it's not that I'm deleting it, just so you know. It's because certain words can trigger it to go to a held for review section. That's basically like a spam folder, just so you guys know. And it's just that I get thousands of comments every day combined between my three videos 
and I just don't have time to go through. I do go through some of them, and like sometimes your comment may appear later, but I just don't have time to go through. I mean, I literally probably have like hundreds of thousands of comments. I just I just don't have time to go through the help for review uh, section in there. So sometimes I do go through like the recent in there, and I'll like approve some of them. Um, but some of them are just like you know profanity laden, whether they're like complaining about Biden or the Republicans or whatever right you know you get people from both sides right um but sometimes it's it might be a terrorist thing or it might be whatever right so they they can block some things right okay or leave it up to the creator to approve or on facebook they'll just maybe they'll ban you for a day or a week or something i, I mean i'm sure some of you have dealt with that um or permanently ban your account right but this is the problem is that they can't catch everything right and like you know, should you be able to sue the companies for this stuff? And everybody has a different opinion on this stuff. And the question is, is that if you're able to sue companies, internet companies, just because of what you post, that really starts to get into a different realm. We're not talking about like, you know, if you can't sue a gun manufacturer, which up until recently, a federal law said you couldn't, and then really just the California was the first state that even like tried to challenge that. And um, I think that they're even trying to challenge what Governor Newsom did. Of course, I'm sure they are. I haven't looked into it recently. You can if you want to. I'm not from California. Um, but the thing about this is, is that up until recently, you know, these gun manufacturers had basically a legal shield over this. And these these are lethal weapons. They're lethal. I mean, they're, that's what they're made for. They're made to to shoot things. Okay. So um, and now we're talking about basically just posting on the internet was just it's not made to do that. So let me know your thoughts on that. About this, but this is free speech at risk and could change the internet forever. And really, all these different things are at risk as well. So I'll keep you up to date here with everything. Don't forget, we also got the student loan forgiveness here. Uh, as well coming up here, which is 40 million people uh, with $10,000 of student loan forgiveness here also going to be at herd uh, as well, which is financially a big thing here as well. And I'll keep you up to date here on that as well. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click the bell icon after you subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Also, thanks so much for clicking the like button for us and share this video uh, on social media so others can see this video and know what's going on here, and I'll keep you up to date here. Here's some videos you can watch next. Here's another video really big here about tens of millions of Americans losing Medicaid and also could get a bump to their Social Security. Or you can click on this video to see what President Biden just confirmed. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.